with the dandy Williams? Oh, he's my father. He'll be home any minute. Oh. Would you like to come in and wait? Thank you, Mr. Williams. <laughs> Mr. Williams? <laughs> That's your name, isn't it? Well, if my sister heard you call me Mr. Williams, she'd laugh right out loud. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why she should. You may not think so, but I'm only nine years old. Well, you'd never know it. I thought you were much older. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, I'm Miss Bunsen. Well, uh, I'm Mr. Williams. <laughs> it's nice to know you, Mr. Williams. Would you care to be seated? Thank you. I, uh... I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh, no. I was working on some scientific research, but I'm happy to get away from it for a while. Oh. Ah. Well, so you have a sister. Mm-hmm. She's not here, though. She's visiting friends in Philadelphia. Oh. Is she older than you? Not really. She just thinks she is because she was born a few years sooner. <laughs> some girls think that just because they're four or five years older that their brothers are kids. Well, you certainly are not a kid. That's because I take after my father. <laughs> He's no kid either. <laughs> oh, uh, say, would you like to come up to my room and see the project I'm working on for the Cub Scouts? Well, I don't think I It'll should. It'll be all right. <laughs> I'd love to. So, you're a Cub Scout. Well, I just like to help the youngsters out. <laughs> this is my room. Come on in. Can you be seated? <laughs> Thank you. My, it's lovely, a real man's room. How old are you, Elaine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it certainly is a man's room. You know something? I like you. Well, I like you, too. Age shouldn't make any difference between a fella and a girl if they like each other. Should I? Certainly not. I wouldn't care if you were 20. I'd still like you. <laughs> well, that's very sweet. Now, let's see that project. All right, I'll get it. Liz, for crying out loud. Daddy, will you please be reasonable? I do not want to take vocal lessons. Well, the least you can do is see this, Miss Bunsen. She's a very good vocal coach. I don't need a vocal coach. Look, to begin with, you're no Sinatra. <laughs> and a singer has to keep in training all the time, just like a baseball player. Good. Get me Casey Stengel. <laughs> very funny. Don't forget, this is your first crack at a musical comedy, and it's outdoor singing. Not like a nightclub where the rattle of dishes hides your flat notes. <laughs> Hides my what notes? Your room. Um, well, you need help. Yeah, well, I'm not getting it from any vocal coach, you and your Miss Bunsen. Look, you're not gonna coop me up with any ancient ex-opera dame who's got ten chins and a 40-inch waistline. Oh, hello, Miss Bunsen. Hello, Miss O'Neill. Surprise, she left her other nine chins at home. <laughs> Danny Williams? You know, Liz, you're so right. I need a lot of vocal coaching. <laughs> when can we start? Well, how about Friday? That's such a long time off. It's only the day after tomorrow. Oh. Well, why couldn't we have lunch tomorrow? I mean, to discuss the fee and how many lessons I'm going to need and... Any other subject that might come up? <laughs> well, I've already discussed all the details with Miss O'Neill. She can fill you in. I can have lunch with you tomorrow, Danny. <laughs> Thanks loads. It's nothing. You're telling me. <laughs> See you Friday. Goodbye, Miss O'Neill. Bye. Rusty, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful time. Goodbye, Elaine. Bye, Mr. Williams. Daddy? Hmm? I saw her first. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. 
afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Williams. My, you look very lovely today. Mr. Williams, I'm a woman trying to make a living, and that's all I have in mind. Now, if you have any other ideas, I would appreciate it if you would get them right out of your head. All that just because I said you look lovely today? Please, don't try to be cute. Who's being cute? Well, you're certainly not. Here's your orchid, and here's your candy, and please use your playboy tactics on someone else, not on me. Now, shall we get on with the lesson? You know, uh, I hear you talking, but you don't make sense. <laughs> well, I make more sense than your pitiful efforts at poetry. Poetry? <sighs> hmm. Up the river, down the lake, I'm all for you. Please give me a break. <laughs> Signed, Mr. Williams. And this one. Roses are red, violets are blue. Caramels are sweet. Think of me when you chew. <laughs> Signed, Mr. Williams. Now, really, Mr. Williams, don't you think that's rather childish? <laughs> yes, I do. Rusty! Yeah, yeah. Come down here. Well, I was working on my... Oh. <laughs> my, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, did you buy me flowers and candy? No, I didn't. Don't lie, young fella. You know you bought this stuff. No, I didn't. I charged it. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't have a charge account at Tiffany's. You go to your room. I'll deal with you later. Will you excuse me, Elaine? Yeah, she excuses you, Elaine. Go on. Go to your room. I owe you an apology. No, it's all right. I hope you won't punish him too severely. No, but I gotta cut down on his vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's growing too fast for me. Although I can't rightly punish him for having such excellent taste now, can I? Oh, that's very sweet of you. Hmm. I think we better get on with the lesson. <laughs> Okay, you're the boss, teacher. <laughs> First, um, let me hear what you sound like. Well, I don't sound like very much, but then I really don't have to. I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, Miss Bunsen. I, uh, I was against taking these vocal lessons because while I have a style, a style that's done very well for me in the nightclubs, and I figured it'd do okay in this outdoor musical, too. Well, believe me, Mr. Williams, I wouldn't try to tell you how to sing for a nightclub audience, but the stage is another medium. You see, you don't have any microphones to help you. You have to learn how to project your voice. Now, that requires a technique. It's all in the support. <laughs> now, uh, let me hear your voice. Oh, yeah. Well, what'll I sing for you? Well, try one of those tunes. Well, I don't uh, usually sing this sort of stuff. I, I, uh... Hmm? If I loved you Time and again I would try to say all I'd want you to know If I loved you Words wouldn't come in an easy way Round in circles I'd go Afraid and shy, I'd let my golden chances pass me by. Soon you'd leave me, or you would go in the mist of day, never, never to go.
<laughs> Holy Toledo! What a voice! <laughs> You're very kind. Now, in the breathing... Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's a woman with a voice like yours wasting your time giving lessons to a foghorn like me? You should have a career of your own. Mr. Williams, I came here to give you a lesson, and if you don't mind, I would like to get on with it. But, no. but you should be a star. You've got it. I'm not guessing. I'm not just making this up, but I'm not trying to be smart. You really have... Did you ever try to get on a stage? Yes, I did once. What happened? Well, nothing. Oh, that's because you weren't handled properly. But believe me, with the right management and the right... Oh, I know just who to call for you, kid. You're lucky you came oh, here Mr. today. Oh, Mr. Williams, I wish you wouldn't. No trouble. You have a lot of friends in the Muni Opera. All you need is to be heard, and, sister, you're on your way. Mr. Oh. Williams, I'll thank you not to interfere in my personal affairs. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was interfering. No, I'm sorry. You're being very kind, and I'm being very rude. It's just that the subject of a career is a very sensitive one for me. But why? I, I don't want to discuss it. With your looks and your talent, why don't you want to discuss it? Because I don't. Why not? Mr. Williams, I don't owe you an explanation. Well, maybe you don't owe me one, but I'm going to collect one anyway. <laughs> now, why don't you want to discuss a career? Mr. Williams, you are a very stubborn man. And you're a very stubborn woman, but I'm not going to let your stubbornness bury your talent. Now, why don't you want to discuss a career? Because I've been all through it. Mr. Williams, I almost had a career. I was ready to make my professional debut when I lost my husband. Now, I can't gamble on the uncertainties of the theater. You see, I have a daughter. I don't get the connection. But I have obligations, Mr. Williams. I'm a widow with a child to raise. So what? I'm a widower with two children to raise. That doesn't stop me from furthering my career. Oh, yes, but I'm a woman. It's different. It's hard to follow a career and raise a child at the same time. What do you think I do with my kids? Rent them out? <laughs> Look, it seems to me your obligation to your child is to secure her future, and that you can do by going as far as you can in your profession. It's too late. Too late? You're a young woman. You belong in the opera with a voice like that. You've really got it. Now, I've got friends in that field. Just let me arrange an audition for you. Mr. Williams, I couldn't sing for professionals. I've been away too long. I haven't the nerve anymore. Well, you sang for me. Yes, but that's different. Nothing depended on it. If I... If I stood up before an impresario, I... I turned to stone. Oh, no. Don't tell me that with a voice like yours, you're afraid. Yes, I am, Mr. Williams. Now, you're a very nice man, but I wish you'd leave me alone. Why don't you mind your own business? And I still don't understand why she shouldn't come down to the opera house for an audition. Why do we have to listen to her here? Victor, you've got to listen to her here so she won't know it's an audition. She'd be petrified if she knew who you were. She wouldn't utter a sound. I was supposed to hide in a closet. No, no. <laughs> when you introduce her to her, certainly she'll know the names of Rudolph Bemelman, Victor Wengraff, and Thomas Bingham. But you won't be Bingham and Wengraff and Bemelman. No? No, you'll be Manny the butcher's helper. <laughs> Mike the cab driver and Moe the plumber. Friends of mine from the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, never believe this. I do not look like a, a Mike the cab driver. You're Manny, the butcher's helper. <laughs> this is a ridiculous idea. Nobody will take me for a plumber. Of course not. You're Mike, the cab driver. <laughs> that makes me the plumber. You're the plumber. <laughs> oh, no, 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 this is why, gentlemen, please, watch the out. difference. Now, you're going to make a discovery, fellas. What's the matter? How you go about making it? Please, do it for me. All right. We are All right, let's now, play. Now, you don't look like what you're supposed to look like, and I've arranged that, too. Now, come over here. What? Take your coat off, will you, Adolf? Oh, no. What's yeah, but well, if you're going to be Mo the plumber, you got to look like Mo the plumber. Ha! <laughs> I'm a wonderful. Now, look at him. <laughs> and when they hear about this downtown, you'll never live it down. <laughs> 
the butcher. Yeah. See, that looks good on you. <laughs> if I would have a photograph of you, just like I could blackmail you the rest of your life. <laughs> You're really great sports to go through with us. Here you are, Mike. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think this will be fun. Sure. And will. if she is as good as he says she is, I'll drive a taxi. <laughs> give you my word, she's twice as good. If we can just get her to sing. That's right. Now listen, whatever you do, don't let on who you really are. Okay. Now look, you've been in the theater all your lives. Hammer up a little what? bit, remember? <laughs> Mow the plumber, Mike the cab driver, Manny the butcher's fellow. Okay. <laughs> oh, hello, my dear. Hello, Mr. Williams. Come in, come in. Oh, am I disturbing you? I thought we had a lesson today. Oh, we do. We do have a lesson. You're not disturbing me at all. These are my friends from the neighborhood. They always drop in to see me. It's Miss Bunsen, fellas. This is uh, my friend Manny, the butcher's helper. Oh, Manny? Yeah, he's a chicken plucker. <laughs> sure, I've been plucking chickens for Mr. Williams for years. <laughs> I, I like them plucked a certain way. Oh. This is my club yard partner, Mike, the cab driver. Oh. Hi, Tito. How do you do? And the little one that's Mo the plumber. I went to school with him. I take care of his pipes. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing, Moe, you know. Miss Bunsen takes care of my pipes, too. She's my singing teacher. Oh, a singer? Yeah. Why don't you sing us a song, babe? <laughs> hey, does she sing like Sophie Tucker? That's what I like, that rock and roll mama. <laughs> No, Mo, I'm afraid she doesn't sing your kind of stuff, but if you were interested in the opera... Uh, oh. no, opera is for squares. Yeah, I don't go for that egghead music. Yeah. <laughs> Pay no attention to them, Miss Bunsen. They're just saying that now. If they heard you sing, believe me, they'd change their minds. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to add to their troubles by inflicting my voice on them. What troubles? Who has troubles? Uh, well, things must be awfully bad at the municipal opera for its principal executives to take up sidelines like chicken pulling. Fucking. <laughs> really, Mr. Bingham? I told you we should have hid in the closet. <laughs> Mr. Williams, I don't think what you've done is a bit funny. Believe me, this is one time in my life I wasn't trying to be funny. Elaine, this is your big chance. Please let them hear you. Of course. We'd be glad to hear you. This could be your big opportunity, madam. Sorry, I'm leaving. You're not leaving at all. You're acting like a child. Don't tell me how to act. I know what I can do and what I can't do, and you're not going to make a laughing stock out of me. I say you're not getting out of here till I hear you sing. I think that you have embarrassed me enough. You sing for them. I don't want any part of it, you... you butt-in I went through a lot of trouble for you. Elaine! You can hide out in my room! <laughs> you're crazy. I arranged this audition for you. I say she has a temperament of an opera star. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. Guess the opera will have to do without her. Let me try just one more thing. Well, how about that, hey, fellas? Nature's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? How do you like that? Gives talent to the wrong people. Oh, she can sing all right, but that's all. It looks as though it didn't work. He can't talk that way about you. If he wasn't my father, I'd tell him a thing or two. Oh, Rusty, he doesn't mean the things that he's saying. He's just saying them because he wants to make me mad enough to go down and sing. Well, why don't you go right down there and show him anyway? Oh, I'd like to more than anything else in the world. But I can't. Why not? But it's been too long. I'm not ready. Gee, that's what Daddy said when he was getting over his broken leg. He said it wasn't ready. It turned out it wasn't his leg at all. He was just scared to go back in front of an audience. Your father was afraid? Sure he was. Well, I can't imagine your father being afraid. Well, everybody gets afraid at one time or another. Even me. <laughs> <laughs> Even you? Sure. I was afraid to have my tonsils out. Daddy says even the bravest people are afraid sometimes. And he also told me that if you do what you're afraid of doing, then you stop being afraid. So I had my tonsils out. Next time you make a great discovery, call me on a Wednesday. I'm not in on Wednesdays. <laughs> 
Look, Danny, it takes a trained ear to know a trained voice. You probably overestimated her talent, and obviously she knew it. No, really, really, she, she sings well, Mr. Bingham, really, she sings great. Believe me, Danny, if she could really sing, she would have sung. I guess you're right. Thank you. Well. Standard, you're the one who got her to sing. Well, you started it. Look, Russ, I'm gonna miss her too, but I couldn't let a talent like that go undiscovered. Just think, son. In a couple of months, she'll make her debut with the Municipal Opera. Won't that be wonderful? She'd go on to become a big star. And you and I, well, we can be kind of proud that we, we helped her along, see? Yeah, I guess you're right, Dad. Of course I'm right. Oh, that must be my new vocal coach. Oh, boy. Don't you oh, boy me. Now you get lost. Well, gee, can I even meet her? No, I don't want any competition from you with this one. Now you go on. Go up to your room and don't you come down unless I call you. Yes, sir. You're sure. Rusty, your vocal coach is here. <laughs> 